Good day, Wonder Nurses. I'm Nurse Anne. Today, we will talk about the important information about pediatric gastrointestinal disorders like Hirschsprung's disease, pyloric stenosis, celiac disease, and intussusception. So if you're ready, let's start. Hirschsprung's disease. It is also known as a ganglionic megacolon. A ganglionic means the absence of intestinal nerve cells in the intestine. The ganglion cells are responsible for bowel relaxation. Without it, the bowel remains constricted and narrow. That's why the first common manifestation is the failure of the infant to pass meconium for 24 to 48 hours after the delivery. Since the peristal cyst was affected, the stools are ribbon-like or goat-like stools. There is also hypoactive bowel sound and abdominal distension. Diagnostic tests include biopsy that will show a result of the absence of ganglion cells. The management is a colostomy. Next is pyloric stenosis. Pyloric refers to the pylorus, which is the muscle in the stomach, while stenosis means narrowing. So in simple definition, pyloric stenosis is the narrowing of the pylorus because of its thickened muscle. It is located between the stomach and the small intestine. The cause of this condition is still unknown. Since there is a narrowing and can result in obstruction, the key manifestations are palpable olive-shaped mass at the right upper quadrant, projectile vomiting, and visible peristaltic waves from left to right across the epigastrium during or immediately after feeding. The complications are also related to the manifestations. These are malnutrition and dehydration due to vomiting and can lead to metabolic alkalosis if not prevented. Note, the vomitus is white and does not have any bile because the narrowed or obstructed part is in the upper GI tract. The diagnostic test is a barium swallow. It is also called esophagogram. It is an imaging test to check the problems in the upper GI tract. Management Pyloromyotomy, which is done to widen the pylorus. Nursing interventions Oral feedings are withheld to prevent further electrolyte depletion. Monitor for signs of dehydration and electrolyte imbalance. Finally, monitor vital signs, intake and output, and weight of the patient. Celiac disease. It is also called gluten enteropathy. It is an immune reaction when a patient eats foods that contain gluten. It is a protein found in barley, rye, oats, and wheat. Eating gluten triggers an immune response in the small intestine. Continuous reaction damages the lining of the small intestine and prevents it from absorbing some nutrients. Its key manifestations are the distended abdomen, weight loss, steatorrhea, muscle wasting, diarrhea, and malabsorption syndrome. Management. The only way to prevent the symptoms is to follow a gluten-free diet. This will let the intestine heal and stops further inflammation and complications. Lastly, is intussusception. It is a serious condition that occurs when a portion of the intestine folds like a telescope, with one part slipping inside the other part. This will cause obstruction and prevents the passage of food in the intestine. 
The cause is still unknown, although viral infections may be responsible in some cases. It may also be caused by an abnormality like a polyp in the intestine or a result of recent intestinal surgery. Key Manifestations The earliest manifestation is a sudden pain due to intestinal crops. The stool is red, looks bloody, and mucus or jelly-like. Lastly, is a sausage-shaped mass upon physical exam. Management Enema An enema is done by placing a small tube into the rectum. A barium enema is also used to confirm the diagnosis of intussusception. As a treatment, fluid or air is gradually added to push the intestine back to its normal position. But if it is not successful, surgery will be the next option. Thank you for listening. I hope you learn and understand something. If you want more videos, don't forget to subscribe. See you in the next video.